Los Angeles, summer of 1984. The United States gymnastics team make the impossible dream come true. First, the men's team with the gold medal. Now, for the first time on network television since the Olympics, you'll see America's triumphant gymnast in a special performance in the summit in Houston, Texas. The enthusiastic crowd welcoming Mary Lou Retton back to the town in which she trained. Today on ABC's Wide World of Sports. Olympic gymnastics champions. This is the summit in Houston, Texas, a stop for the United States Olympic gymnastic medalist tour. Hello, everyone. I'm Jack Whitaker. The Summer Olympic Games in Los Angeles produced many thrills, and not the least of which came from the competition in gymnastics. Despite the absence of the Eastern Bloc countries, it was a week of high drama and high emotion. It was an unforgettable experience, not only for the athletes, but for the spectators and for those of us who were lucky enough to cover it. One of those was our colleague at ABC, Gordon Maddox, who has spent most of his life in gymnastics. And what are your thoughts now looking back at Los Angeles? Well, Jack, I think that uh, uh, this triumphant uh, American gymnastics happening from the Olympic Games, in order to be kept in perspective, we got to take a look at some other things and remember some other times. And those who chronicle the history of gymnastics are going to find themselves dealing with two distinctly different times. The before Olga Corbett times and the after Olga Corbett times. And just a few years before Olga Corbett, the United States Gymnastics Federation had its national championship in Nashville, Tennessee. And when the president of the university hosting that championship heard that the American women would be competing in those scant leotards, he banished them from the gym. And they held their competition in a high school outside the city limits. Well, about that same time as a university coach, I was spending tons of money bringing in international gymnasts for promotional, invitational competitions. You know what we had at the end of the competition? Had family and friends in the audience and an empty checkbook. That's kind of the times as they were then. Now, the after Olga times, I think we ought to leave to our younger colleagues who probably don't even remember the times we're talking about now. All right, Gordon, thank you. Certainly no one made America more aware of women's gymnastics than Kathy Rigby back in the 70s. What do you think, looking back on Los Angeles? Well, I think the success of the men and the women's Olympic gymnastic team has been a lifelong dream come true, especially for all the dedicated coaches and gymnasts that have watched the sport struggle just to be recognized as a major factor in world competition. There was a great boost in 1972 with Olga Corbett, as Gordon said, and in 76 with Nadia Comaneci. These gymnasts today are a result of that boom. But I don't think anything compares to the excitement generated by this team and names like Mary Lou Retton and Julianne McNamara. All right. Thank you, Kathy. In 1978, Kirk Thomas was the world champion. He was at the peak in 1980 for the Olympics when the boycott struck. What are your thoughts looking back now at Los Angeles? Well, looking back to 1978, when we did open the doors at the World Championships, it was a tremendous victory for us. But 1979 really clinched it when we had the bronze medal in the, in the team championship. That opened the door for us to go ahead and do something in 1980. Well, we had the boycott, and that really hurt us. But I think these men who stayed together for so long, four years, and the determination that they had, came off with the victory, beating the People's Republic of China, the world champions, shows a lot of class and a lot of determination. And a young lady that has both class and determination is Julianne McNamara. Who can forget her perfect score on the uneven bars at the Olympic Games in Los Angeles? And she starts with a stem. Talk about strength and timing. Now she's coming up as a release move. It's a reverse hex. Look at the swing. Every movement is almost parallel to the bars. That's just where she wants it. Look at each move with, with complete as we call it amplitude in gymnastics or fullness right to a handstand so far so good clear hip front nothing wrong with that routine oh, yeah. great great exercise 
And now here is Julianne in Houston with the floor exercise. at the summit in Houston, Texas. And here is Mary Lou Retton. In Los Angeles, she was engaged in a tight battle with Ekaterina Zabo of Romania for the all-around gold medal. When they came to the vault, she needed a 10. She does what is called a layout Sukahara with a full twist. There is the green light. The distance she gets on this particular vault is about 22 feet. She has two vaults, remember. Oh, boy. Yes! She has done the best vault of her life. She, she knows what she's done now. Full twisty Sugara. I knew in the air that I was going to land it. And I knew if I landed it, I was, I was getting it. it. Oh, it was beyond words. Now here is Mary Lou in Houston, Texas, performing on the balance beam set to music. Talk about pressure. It was all through the Olympics, and she handled it so very well. But there's pressure here. These people want to see, there's a little bobble there, want to see an Olympic-style routine, which is very difficult to do after all the training she went through and all the pressure. This was a solid event for Mary Lou during the Olympics. You know, Kathy Bella Caroli, her coach, uh, the one thing that I recall from his Romanian teams was they never fell off the balance beam. That, that's absolutely true, and I think that it was a real challenge to Bella in the beginning to work with Mary Lou because she had a great deal of talent, and she could do many, many different tricks, but she couldn't stay on the beam, and he changed all of that, and as we saw during the Olympics. Concentration is still there. The back tuck. She may not be in the great shape she'd like to be in, but she's pretty darn solid on the beam. Yes, she you? is. And this is good, very good practice for Mary Lou with world championships a ways away at this point. Every time she can get up in front of people in a crowd like this, the better. And she knows she's done a good routine so far. And her dismount, round off, All right. back layout. There's Bella. Bella's happy about it, for sure. Davis should be happy about his gold medal winner. After coaching Nadia Komenich of Romania to gold medals in 1976 and 1980, Bela has started a new American dynasty of Olympic champions. We'll be back with a visit to his gym where future Mary Lou's are being trained. Bella Caroli, the sport's most famous coach and tutor to American stars Mary Lou Retton and Julianne McNamara. Our cameras first found Caroli several months before the 1976 Summer Olympics in his native Romania, where he was overseeing the development of a then relatively unknown adolescent girl who was shortly to become the most celebrated woman athlete in the world. 
After Nadia Comaneci became, at 14, the youngest gymnast ever to win Olympic gold medals, Caroli and his wife Martha defected to this country and established a gym in Houston. And it was there that American gymnasts first began to benefit from his uniquely personal coaching style. The intensity is manic, the results are dramatic. In Los Angeles, Caroli's pupils and former pupils accounted for 14 medals, six of them gold. Now let's rejoin Jack Whitaker for more performances by American gymnastics champions and to learn more about Bella Caroli's gym. Since the Olympic Games, interest in gymnastics has exploded all over the United States. Bela Caroli and his wife Marta have seen enrollments double at their gym on the north side of Houston. This is where Mary Lou Retton and Julianne McNamara train. And today, aspiring Mary Lou's and Julianne's work out together with the Olympic champions. These youngsters come from all over the country. And in the elite class of those gymnasts who actually compete, some are only eight years old. Kathy Rigby McCoy talked with Bela about the chances of Yo. these young girls fulfilling the Olympic dream. We know very well when the, the idols are coming up, there is, there is a pretty remote uh, goal for the little young one, for the beginner. So we would like, you know, to don't cheat them to say, hey, tomorrow you're going to be an Olympic champion. Right. Or tomorrow you're going to be a great international, well-known competitor. We would like, you know, to introduce them to the reality, to love gymnastics, first of all, love the gymnastics activity, the sport of gymnastics, and later, step by step, introducing them in competitive system, in competitions, having more and more satisfaction competing and performing. Yes, and sometimes, some days, who knows, some of them, they're going to become great competitors, who knows, mm -hmm. one of them Olympic champion. That Olympic dream costs more than money. Among other things, it means leaving home. Kathy talked to 10-year-old Julianne Viteri of Massachusetts about how she came to Bella School. Try to do something better. My father was just watching the Olympics and he said that I was doing most of the things that they were doing. And um, he just called Bella and talked, well, Bella wasn't there, so she, he just talked to Marta. And then we just made arrangements to come down. And then, so she evaluated me and then I just came down with my mother and then she just left. You've been here for three weeks? Yes. Well, how has your experience been so far? It's been really fun. The people I've, I'm living with and then with the good coaching I'm getting, it's worth it that I came down here. How do you feel about leaving your family at this point? Do you miss them? Yes, a lot. <laughs> Is it hard for you to be away? Well, sometimes I get over it, and then others I just stay up in my room. But most of the time I just get over it. Ready? Yes, it's a lonely life at times for a young girl, but there's always someone there to help, like their idol, Mary Lou Retton. It's difficult, it really is, especially at the ages of 10 and 11 and 12. But I think it's so, it's so important to get the right coaching. And here at Caroli's gym, I mean, it's obvious that that's where it is. Do any of the young gymnasts ever come to you and, and ask for advice? Yeah, they do, and they'll ask me, you know, I miss my mom, you know, and I, you know, I try and comfort them and say, you know, I know what you're going through, I've been through it, but it'll, it'll be okay. This is 14-year-old Kim Hurley from Florida, another student at the Caroli School. She has the full support of her parents in her quest, but unlike some, the parents will encourage her without pushing her. Well, I think, like anything, this has been a, a big challenge for Kim, and you can never fail. We never would look back. We just, you always look ahead, and, and uh, Kim's determined, and she'll, this has shown us right here that, that she'll have a very successful life, and no, we would not be disappointed uh, if she would not make an Olympic team. She's, she would be successful just being in the program. Go. These are the eight-year-olds at Baylor's gym. These little dynamos of raw energy that he shapes into strong, graceful athletes. He calls them his little hopes. Here is Christy Phillips, at 12, one of Baylor's more advanced pupils. Christy will perform on the balance beam. It must be a thrill for her to be 
up here performing with all the Olympians. And to have an idol in her own gym, someone to pattern herself after. This is a tough event for a youngster. Whoops, look at that. These are our future Olympians, or at least Olympic hopefuls. She has a great deal of poise so far. Scissor split leap there. Oh, look at that. Great originality. She came along at a time when there were boycotts and nobody to really pattern herself after until Mary Lou. So it's been on her own motivation and determination. Round off back layout. She sticks it. For a tiny little girl, she has quite large feet, hasn't she? Well, that's huh? that's very helpful, holding yeah. on to that beam. <laughs> and I'm sure there are a lot of youngsters her age just watching very intensely at this time to see where they stand. And cat leap turn. Well, Jack, I would say so far she has done a very nice routine. And covering up just a little bit there. will be building for that 1988 team. Oh, all right. Christy Phillips. Another Karoli star in the ascendancy. Oh, we'll be back with Bart Connor, Mitch Gaylord, and Peter Vidmar, and another performance by Mary Lou Retton. This is the United States men's gymnastic team in their great moment of victory in Los Angeles. Now here they are being introduced to the audience at the summit in Houston, Texas. And now a gentleman who made the 1980 Olympic team and came back from injury to be spectacular on the 1984 team and to win two gold medals on pommel horse, Bart Connor. Here is Bart Connor about to do the pommel horse. I think he chose the pommel horse in this exhibition because it's one of his smoother events. It's an easy event to... <laughs> <laughs> crowd said, we love you, Bart, and uh, threw his concentration off a little bit there. <laughs> I love it. The, the relaxed atmosphere and performing like this is, is really neat. I'll try that again, Bart. This is something new to gymnastics, isn't it? The consummate showman. <laughs> He's got to start sometime. Back more. Also, you've noticed the music that's been added to give it a little bit more of a show effect. Working through the handstand and smoothly going through some scissors here. Scissor half turn. Not quite the Olympic routine that Bart usually performs. Flare work. And it's dismount up through a handstand. All right. Bart Connor on the pommel horse. And here's what Bart considers to be his greatest Olympic moment. I've been through a lot in gymnastics, as you know, and uh, all the injuries and all the problems, 16 years competing. And it always seems like it comes down to that one final moment. I was doing my parallel bar routine. And it was going very nicely, but everybody knows at the Olympics you have to stick to dismount. That's what seemed the only thing that really seemed to matter. So my routine was going beautifully and everything was going great. And I got ready to swing down for my dismount, the double back on parallel bars, knowing that I have to stick it if I plan on winning this thing. And I thought, oh my God, if there's any justice in the world, how about a little right now? And I stuck it, and that was like a wonderful time because everything seemed to come together. And, uh, you know, you think back of all the years and all the work you've done, and it all came down to whether I was going to stick that dismount, and I did. 25 international competitions, countless Olympic 2A and U.S. national team events. From Los Angeles, former UCLA Bruin, Peter Bittmar. Peter, as you remember, finished second in the all-around competition behind Koji Gushikin of Japan. But he was far from disappointed and brings back marvelous memories from the Olympic Games in Los Angeles.
my greatest Olympic moments had to be uh, getting on the victory stand with my teammates for the team gold medal because uh, although we had a chance to have individual honors afterwards, that was really just icing on the cake. And uh, I know it was so close for me to, to win that all-around title that I did miss it by just a little bit. Uh, I still wouldn't trade it uh, for anything in the world. That team championship was the most important thing. And, uh, and we really can't... Uh, we, we can't reminisce uh, with our friends about a, an individual honor like we can about a team honor because it's something that in the future we all be able to get together again and really, really uh, relive the moment together because uh, that's really what's going to bring better memories. Of and now Peter on the parallel bars. Now that's the first time you'll see him stalled her out to the side. Probably do the same thing a little bit later in his exercise. Spits a hand, down it off to the side. Here he shoots back up. Now comes a press. the darling of the Michael Jackson set, hasn't it? That 10 to 12, 13 year old group. He really has. You'll, you'll hear this crowd right here screaming for Mitch in a minute. And uh, we'll see what he, do, he does on this event. And now the winner of four medals in the Olympic Games. Here's the build up. The yep. medal winner in this event on parallel bars, Mitch Gaylord. Curious to see if he uses his Olympic routine. He's starting on the side, which is his mount. Stalled her up from the side. And a nice stitch to a handstand. Back toss, reverse cut. Not quite as crisp as the Olympic Games, but a different routine for Mitch. <laughs> Looking to the side a little bit there. Nice flange. Strength move. Press into a handstand. Still got the strength there. And his tuck double dismount. Okay. <laughs> Mitch Gaylord. We asked Mitch if he thought this fine Olympic men's team could stay together and compete more. Hey, we'd all like to stay in the sport and keep our status where it is right now. I think if we all quit right now or retired, um, we'd really lose our momentum, and this team was a great team, and I'd like to see it stay together. We'll do everything we can to keep it together. All right, we'll be back at the summit in Houston, Texas, with Kathy Johnson, right after this. big boys. One of the most poignant moments in the emotionally charged gymnastic competition in Los Angeles occurred with Kathy Johnson's performance on the balance beam. At 24, Kathy was the oldest member of the United States women's team. After the boycott in 1980, she decided to stay in the sport for the 1984 Games. She almost did not make the Olympic team. And then she turned in this brilliant routine. If she can continue this way, this is the best routine I've seen Kathy do. What a way to finish. Yes. Indeed, it's her final performance. What a swan song. Big hug from Coach Peters. Ah, uh, yes. Tears of joy. 
Kathy had saved the best for last, and she talked to us about her Olympic memories. First favorite moment is winning the silver with the team. Uh, team has always been special to me, and being able to pull together and be part of finally winning an Olympic medal as part of a team was something special. And then the next moment was balancing in finals. And it wasn't just, it really wasn't winning the medal. It was uh, performing my balancing routine the way I knew that I could do it. Uh, overcoming, you know, what happened the two nights before. And I got up there and I felt, I felt so good on the beam and I just felt it all coming together. And when I landed, it was like a bittersweet moment. I knew it was my last, but I knew it was my best. The two nights before that Kathy referred to was a poor performance she had put in on the balance beam in the all-around competition. But that's all behind her now. Here she is in Houston, Kathy Johnson, and the balance beam. And this event has haunted Kathy over the years. She's been on and off, and she came through during the Olympics. And the balance beam is actually a lot of fun to perform, especially in an exhibition. The fear of falling off and losing points is gone. And Kathy, being the artist that she is, can perform without any restrictions. How nice it would be to have music to balance beam all the time. Double twist, very nice exercise. And we'll be back with a performance by Mary Lou Retton in the floor exercise. In Los Angeles, the brilliance of the gymnast shone more brightly in Mary Lou Retton, perhaps, than in anyone else. I'm anxious to compete against the Eastern Bloc countries because they're going to be after me. I know it right now. And, you know, I work better under pressure, so I'm ready for it. Mary Lou, you have reached the highest goal possible for any gymnast. Can you stay motivated? It's really hard to go back because before you're in such great shape, and, you know, I'm sure you know, you can't stay in Olympic form all the time. There's just no possible way. And it is hard because everything came so easily then, and now you have to work your way back up. But I, I still feel I have that fire inside of me that I, I can maybe do it again. Champion of the USA. And now, ladies and gentlemen, there she is from Fairmont, West Virginia. Mary Lou Retton, and she's going to do the floor exercise. And this event, as well as the vault, gave Mary Lou Retton a reputation at the Olympics that truly her competitors and made them very, very nervous.
This is where she shows off her strength and her power and her crowd appeal. First tumble run, round off back handspring, double back. Not the double layout we saw at the Olympics, but then you only do that in competition. <laughs>